Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, welcome to you all here today on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning. This is our second outdoor experience of worship this year. While we are still in the COVID-19 experience, it's good to be together. It's good that you are here. I was thinking I would not wear my robe, but I got cold. Today is the third Sunday in the Easter season that we are celebrating today. And I'm prayerful that this worship service may be an opportunity for each of us to appreciate all that God has provided to us, giving us new life, hope, encouragement, even during a pandemic opportunity, we have that to look forward to when we are all together in the sanctuary. We are outside in this beautiful sanctuary, and we're grateful to God for that. I will say that uh, your offerings today can be placed in the offering plates on the table before you leave or you can make your offering online at the church's website if you choose now we'll begin with our call to worship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all Please join me in prayer. Living God, long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. Amen.
we know through our faith that God does not call us to a blind faith, but to a faith that is open-eyed, one that enriches all of who we are. But we are often finding it easier to behave as if God's vision were, uh, for creation were for another time. We come to share our truth through the prayer of confession. Let us pr pray together our prayer of confession. Ever merciful God, our creator and redeemer, hear our prayer. We confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to bear the burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sins and free us from selfishness that we may choose your will and obey your commandments through Jesus Christ our hear now our silent prayers of confession In Christ we pray, amen. forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Since God has forgiven and accepted us in Christ, let us accept and forgive one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be within you. Greet those near you and those you meet this week with the sign of Christ's peace. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us for eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The first reading today comes from the Psalms. Chapter 4, verses four through, 6 through 8. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. 
See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God? And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Friends in Christ, listen now for the good news. The gospel of our Lord on this third Sunday at Easter, it comes to us from Luke's account. We've moved from John talking about the resurrection. Now we hear from the, the gospel of Luke. Listen for God's word today. While they were talking about this, now what they were talking about is that two of the disciples had recently met with and had dinner with Jesus. They did not know it was Jesus at the time until he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And you remember their eyes were open, and then they knew, and he disappeared from them. That's what the two of them were sharing with the twelve at this point in time. They had traveled back seven hours uh, walk to Jerusalem to be with the other disciples. They were talking about what had happened. And then Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you, do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet see that it is I myself touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have and when he said this he showed them his hands and his feet while in their joy they were disbelieving while they were in joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. And he said to them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a, a piece of broiled fish and he took it and he ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Israel, from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. We thank God for the reading of this word that it might help us to better understand something about the cross and its meaning in our lives today. This is a time of post post-crisis peace you heard our Lord say to his friends peace be with you before Jesus showed the disciples his hands and his feet he did say that he said peace be with you and as he was telling them the crisis of his cross was over it was complete he might have also asked them a question. What is it, friends, that you have learned about God's love from this crisis? 
you might also have asked, how has my cross changed you? How has my suffering on the cross sensitized you to the suffering of people around you? How has it, how has it called you to enter into the pain of others and risk yourselves being changed by allowing the spirit of life to pull you into the self-giving love of God. Crisis averted. How might the disciples' crisis of Jesus' cross help us today to accept that same peace and to know that new life is possible after the cross and after any crisis that we've experienced. I know that some of you, a number of years ago, were called by God's Spirit to travel to New Orleans after the Hurricane Katrina struck there. You are moved by their crisis like first responders are moved to go into and care for others and who risk themselves for the sake of the suffering of others. How did that event change you? How did it change this church? The mainline church in the United States and in Europe has been in a glacial slow moving crisis for decades. I'm sure you have read about it. In Europe, cathedrals closed are now museums. In this country, churches closed or merged together. All this is not a result of the pandemic at all. It's a result of multiple generations of young people and their parents who have never, never been in a sanctuary, never been in a church. Dr. Charles, Charlie uh, Nielsen, my uh, theology professor, Reformation theology, he made an interesting calculation about 45 years ago. He calculated that at the rate the Presbyterian Church was losing members every year, by the year 2020, last year, there should be no Presbyterians left. While his prediction was not realized, his concern for the church was shared by many people in the church and is to this day of concern to many. The church is in crisis, but it's not about numbers. No. Or that many churches have closed their doors, which they have. Or joined together with other churches, which they have. One true crisis is that so many young people see the church as ambivalent to them, as uncaring of their interests and their needs or their struggles. When we look at the church's history, it has been in and out of crisis forever. We see it in today's gospel that the church was formed within crisis. We see that it almost didn't happen because of the fear, the confusion, the chaos that the early disciples were in. You heard Jesus in the 
gospel today, regardless of their joy at seeing what appeared to be Jesus, the disciples themselves were disbelieving. When the church is being the church, it emphasizes and empathizes with those who are suffering. It joins with them, remembering that new life comes from the cross. The early disciples, both women and men, they learned that truth gradually over years of time. It didn't all happen all at once. And because they did, God's Spirit formed the church through those many years in the crucible of the empty cross. The triumph of life over death, God's acceptance over rejection, Christ's peace amidst the chaos of any tragedy. One of the virtual Zoom classes of the church that I have been sharing in at uh, 1 p.m. on Thursdays is now being led by Robert Owens. He chose a book that he thought we would be interested in, and it is a good book. It's uh, called Let Us Dream. Let Us Dream, a, The Path to a Better Future. It's written by Pope Francis. It's very readable. Now, in that book is a very familiar story that the Pope has, has used. The story of the Good Samaritan who put aside his personal cares, his personal agenda as he was going to wherever he was going and entered the world of the one who was suffering who he passed alongside the road. The Samaritan, the foreigner, the outsider, entered the crisis of a man who was hurt, who needed aid, and risked being changed himself by entering into the other person's crisis in the same way that those of you who entered into the crisis in New Orleans risked being changed. And you were, and everyone who has been on a mission trip anywhere, even a mission trip down the street, knows you can be changed. You will be changed by that trip. You will come back a different person. There's always, always a new crisis that is brought to us each day by the media. There's hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, families who are starving, wars, abuse of all kinds, and so many other daily crises that many may awake the church to our core reason for being, or it may not. Isn't it difficult it is for me to listen day in and day out to the stories that come across the media of tragedy. This is why we pray. We pray for the churches and we pray for all people of faith who are in the locations around the world where those crises are taking place. If you have any doubts about how we are to respond to the human suffering which is right next door to us in this neighborhood or in adjacent neighborhoods, if you have any questions, open the Bible to Matthew. Read the 25th chapter of Matthew and you will learn all you need to know. The crises that get little attention by the media are those crises that are owned 
by our neighbors in this and nearby neighborhoods and communities. These are people who are on the margins of society. The Pope reminds us in that book that Jesus went and ministered to those who are on the fringes of society, the margins of society. Jesus went to be with the marginalized, the outcast, the ill, the mentally challenged, the handicapped of all kinds. How many around this building today, how many in this community are in crisis at this moment that we don't know of? Young people, students, families, seniors. Our crisis is that perhaps we have grown insulated, isolated, forgetting or never learning how we can build bridges between Christ's church and those who suffer, who are needing a spiritual home. Perhaps we have grown too content with ourselves being the church of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. The church that was continuously growing, getting larger and larger and then plateaued and then began to lose more and more members and become smaller and smaller. I think the root of our crisis in the church is contentment. So many need and desire to belong to an extended loving family. Who is our neighbor? Literally within walking distance yet on the margins where we don't see them or their crises. Who are our neighbors? Some of them in our community around here are gay. They are lesbian. They're LGBTIQ neighbors. They're neighbors with drug and alcohol problems. They're neighbors with mental illness all who are in crisis of faith, a crisis of rejection, a crisis of feeling judged, all of who need a spiritual home, a healing touch of acceptance, so faith can become real for them and the cross understood as not something that just hangs on the building, that we walk past, but is a living symbol of hope, new life, new beginnings, not as an end. The pandemic has forced all of us to spend more time alone, to look inward perhaps to find new spiritual resources, I hope, has our pandemic loneliness sensitized us, made us empathetic to those on the margins of this community who are so little noticed? Those on the periphery, we don't see because we are looking here. We don't see them, they're out here. We've been reading and reading and reading during this pandemic time. We've been sharing ideas with each other. Classes have been meeting in a wonderful way, continuously. This is good news. This is something that's powerful. We have been filling our heads and our minds with all kinds of information about people that are in need. I think, though, the time is near when our hearts need to be fed. 
as well as our heads. Fed by entering into dialogues with our neighbors who are on the periphery. This can happen when we shift from only reading about our neighbors to meeting them, to listening to them, going where they are to meet them. One church that I served where you went in uh, New Orleans, a woman said to me, you know, I never took the bus until my car broke down and I was forced to take the bus. She told me she learned so much by taking the bus. She met so many people. She said she never would have met before on the bus. People who are on the periphery. They are down the street. They play ball over here. I've met them. I've talked with them. It's not hard to do. They play down the street in the park. They play frisbee and tennis. All we need to do is go and talk with them, meet them, get to know them. You cannot very easily invite a book to worship, but you can invite a friend to worship. Will you join me in prayer? God, you called us to minister in your name to all who are in need. We all are. Sometimes we don't realize it. Help us to reach out and have a conversation with someone that we would not normally speak to. That we might share with them who we are what is important to us that they might share the same with us. The beginning of friendship might begin, Lord, and only you know what can happen from that. We thank you for this day, for the beauty of the birds singing, this gorgeous sanctuary that you've provided to us, and for all those who are here bless them. In Christ we pray. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, let's join together and say what we believe by reading the affirmation of faith printed in your bulletin. We believe there, there is, is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. For, for we, we know that all things work together, together for good, good. For those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose, we are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We pray now the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Loving God, through Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in the his name. So guide us by the light of your Holy Spirit 
that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. Through the same risen Lord, Jesus Christ, hear our prayers. We pray for the worldwide church and all ecumenical groups, for varied ministries, and for those who minister to human need, spiritual and physical. God, you called us to be your church, to share good news about your presence within us, to live as Jesus lived, to be brought back to life in our times of trial by your living spirit breathed into us May that same spirit be breathed into those we minister to. Lord, hear our prayers for peace. Jesus came to remove barriers between us, leading to division and hostility, injustice and war, and make us instruments of your peace. We pray for families that members experience the joys of nurturing one another, that future generations may know harmony and have a seat at your table, feeling welcomed. God, since we cannot love unless we love our neighbors who may be our enemies, remove from us judgment hate, prejudice, from us and from all people, so that we, your children, may be reconciled with those we may fear who live on the margins of society. May we live together in your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sovereign God of all that is, we pray for the leaders of all who govern. May they govern so their self-interests are outweighed by the needs of those they govern. And we pray that the servant leadership of Christ become their model. Lord, you are merciful to the sick, the suffering, and the lost. Open our ears and our eyes to hear and see those who need your help today. Those we hear of in the media and those we drive by on the streets. God of compassion, bless us and those we love our friends and families, those whose earthly lives have ended and who live on eternally with you, drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to them and to each other. Risen Lord, all this we ask in your name, for you taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn today, sending hymn, is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. And I wanted to give a bit of explanation. This is a Jamaican hymn tune, so it's very energetic. And the repeating refrain we sing twice at the end of each verse jesus lives again earth can breathe again pass the word around loaves abound 
you'll see some reference to communion in this with the loaves and the blood. But at the end, when it says loaves abound, that is the body of Christ. That is us. So all around are the body of Christ. to the world love and serve the Lord strive for justice and pray and work for peace for the empowerment of the oppressed for the well-being of the ill for the homeless for the hopeless be sustained by our triune God God the Creator Christ the Redeemer and God the spirit which enlivens us all go and have a wonderful day that God has made for you amen <laughs>